Now that we're done with the discussion about command economy and uh, free market economy, we're good to talk about mixed economy, which is the most popular economic system these days. What is a mixed economy? Well, mixed economy is an economic system that takes into account the advantages of both free market and command economy, and therefore come up with something of a mix, which is that there is both the private sector where resources are owned privately, and then there is the public sector where the government is owning resources. Hence, in a mixed economy, we can see there is government intervention alongside a good private sector that is operating and providing goods and services. In the private sector, we'll see there is competition, while in the public sector, resources will be allocated through planning mechanisms. So while, while we look at private sector, private sector will operate just like the free market economy. There will be a lot of competition. The goods and services will be provided through the market forces of demand supply, while in the public sector, there will be planning. So for example, in a, in a mixed economy, uh, public utilities like electricity, like water, and basic necessities are sometimes provided by the government because the government feels these are the goods which are important for people. What about the interest or motivation? Well, we say in the private sector, there is basically self-interest because profit is the main motive, while in the government sector or the government sort of public sector, we will see social welfare to be determining uh, people's interests and to be determining the allocation of resources. Now, in a mixed economy, government can also intervene to correct market failures. Now, one of the problems that we saw in a free market economy, there were market failures, but now in a mixed economy, because the government is present, it becomes the regulator for a lot of these sectors, and therefore it can stop uh, any good and service that is causing a market failure. Hence, a strong legal system is something which the government provides in this economic system because through laws and legal system, the government is trying to control the harmful activities. Now, how does the government get the money for all of this? Because, you know, when you have a government uh, which is operating and trying to also control the economy, they need resources. So the government basically finance its activities through what we call taxes uh, on income, wealth, uh, and goods and services. So the taxation is providing funds for the government to operate in this economic system. Let's now look at how market can fail and how the government can be very useful in intervening. So when you look at this economic system, the role of government becomes essential. So uh, we saw in a free market economy that only those goods that were profitable were being produced. For example, a market economy will not provide you things like education and healthcare in the right amount, which we call merit goods, primarily because some people may not be able to afford it. So for example, during COVID, vaccines were really important and therefore the government can play a role here because they can pro provide or produce these merit goods, such as education, healthcare, vaccine, for people regardless of people's ability to pay for them. Why? Because this is good for the society and economy and everyone can benefit from having a very healthy and educated population. And, and that's why whenever in a free market then the price is too high for these goods like education and healthcare, the government can produce these goods and can help in benefiting consumers by undertaking this production or even subsidizing this production of goods and services. We also see that in a free market, uh, street lights and flood defenses and national parks, parks, which are basically what we call public goods, are also not provided. Now, why is that so? We saw that in a case of uh, these public goods, their consumers are not willing to pay for it. And if firms are unable to charge, consumers are not willing to pay for these goods, then the ma private sector will not provide these goods. So. What do we do? Well, the government can provide these public goods, such as street lighting and uh, national parks and so on, which otherwise are unprofitable for the private sector to provide. And the notion behind this is this, because these goods are not provided by the free market, they can be given to public for free by government collecting taxes and then paying for these goods. Thirdly, resources, will only be employed in a free market economy if it's profitable to do so. Some people who are willing and able to work and are unemployed because it's not profitable to employ them will never be finding work and therefore will be without income. In a 
mixed economy, the public sector can employ these people who otherwise are unemployed and, and basically provide welfare benefits and unemployment benefits uh, wherever people are not finding jobs despite having a willingness to work. In free market economy, we also see harmful goods like the demerit goods like drugs and weapons can be produced and freely available for consumers to buy them. There is no regulation because there is no government. But when there is mixed economy, laws can be made to in, the, in terms of production of harmful pro products or consumption of har harmful products. Or we could even put taxes to make it uh, unaffordable for, for people to buy these goods. Uh, such as in the case of cigarettes, we can reduce consumption by putting very high taxes. And so the government's role here is to regulate the demerit goods or any undesirable goods in the market. Another important thing is sometimes uh, producers are ignoring the harmful effects of what we call uh, uh, negative externalities or third party costs because those third party costs are, uh, are causing a harm to our environment or people's health. Now, how do we take that into account? Well, the government can make laws and regulations uh, so that these products are not produced or produced in very limited quantity, or they can actually make firms pay large fines if ever they find that the firms are causing a harm to society or breaking laws which are causing uh, a society to have what we call negative externalities. Lastly, monopoly is another problem that can be taken care of. Some firms which may dominate the supply of uh, particular goods and services can become so powerful they can charge consumers very high price. So what can f uh, government do? Well, uh, these monopolies can be controlled through or regulated through the government's price controls or they can also do something called deregulation which can allow more firms to enter the market. So when we look at free market economy, these market failures can be easily sorted by the government intervention. And that's why in a mixed economy, we get the best of both worlds because we get the government to intervene wherever there is a market failure. Let's talk about what are the problems of government intervention. Government intervention can also have serious issues. Uh, one of the serious issues we can talk about is that we are putting a lot of taxes on profits and on people, on uh, income and so on. So that can be harmful because it could reduce people's incentive to work or reduce a producer's incentive to produce. Uh, and that could be a supply side issue because economies overall supply can get affected if the government is putting too many taxes in order to make its government operation uh, to be funded. Another issue that can happen from uh, regulation is this, that government can cause significant cost on firms because of these regulations. A good example of this is UK versus China. When you look at firms in the UK, the regulations are a lot higher than in China. As a result, Chinese producers are a lot more cheaper when it comes to providing goods and services than UK, and therefore regulations can sometimes make you not competitive in a market. Another challenge that can happen when, the, when, it, when it comes to government intervention is this, that the public sector which is providing these goods and services may not be too efficient to begin with and they may produce poor quality goods and services without much consequences. The public sector organizations we know are not motivated by profits. They are motivated by basically the quantity sometimes or they are motivated by simply providing the good but not by the fact that there is profitability and as a result sometimes what we can see inefficiency can happen in the public sector provision of goods and services. Lastly government spending can be politically motivated where the government is simply doing things in order to get re-elected rather than providing economic welfare. This means that the government role of basically making sure economic welfare is maximized will not happen as the government is thinking about re-election and therefore may want to do only those things which are popular and not those things which are desirable from an economic perspective.